Around 2050, 30 years in the future, a company starts to create Omnic robots, revolutionary robots that were intended to change the world. Unfortunately, these Omnics didn't work as intended, and the Omnica Corporation was shut down. But unannounced to people at the time, an Omnic traveling the world seeking enlightenment named Aurora would be the first Omnic to gain sentience and begin to think for herself. Aurora would later go on to sacrifice herself and by doing so, transcended the entire Omnic race, allowing every Omnic to think and feel for themselves. During this time, around the world, Omnics would reactivate and begin to invade various cities and would be referred to as the Omnic Crisis. Under all this chaos, a team would be formed. This team of highly trained individuals would be named Overwatch. The six founders of Overwatch consisted of Jack Morrison, aka Soldier76, and Gabriel Reyes, aka Reaper, who had both formerly met in the military, Ana Amari, an elite sniper from Egypt, Reinhardt Wilhelm, although not the original recruit, had trained under Baldrich von Adler, who had fallen in battle, Torbjorn Lindholm, a notable engineer whose machines are used around the world, and Mina Liao, thought to be the creator of the Omnics and the one responsible for the crisis, who would also go on to later pass away. They would take on numerous missions and shut down critical Omnic operations, and after many successful missions, the Omnic crisis would finally come to an end. For now. But around the world, many other teams would begin to form. Over in South Korea, the government would gather skilled pilots to operate their newly created mecha suits to help protect against the resisting Omnics that would attack every few months. This team would be known as the Mechas and included professional esports player Hana Song or Diva. Back in America, two outcasts, Cole Cassidy and Elizabeth Caldonia, Ash, would go on to form the Deadlock Rebels and would be known as Notorious Criminals. However, the Overwatch team would catch on to them and capture Cassidy. Instead of spending his life in jail, he decided to join the Overwatch team and formed a new secret organization named Blackwatch. Over in Australia, the government planned on maintaining peace with the Omnics, giving them land and resources. But a group of humans would disagree with these decisions and formed the Australian Liberation Front. They would go on to sabotage the Omnics fusion core, resulting in an explosion that would turn the entire Australian outback into a wasteland. But built from the scraps was Junkertown. There were two initial leaders of Junkertown, Stone and Mason Howell. However, Stone and his family would be kicked from the town, and Stone would go on to later die in the wastelands. North of Australia, in Japan, was the Shimada clan. They had ruled Kanazawa in Japan for centuries, but unfortunately the Shimada leader, Sojiro, was assassinated, and Hanzo, his son, was put in charge of the clan. But unlike his older brother, Genji wanted nothing to do with the Shimada clan. Infuriated by this, Hanzo and Genji would get into a fight, leading to Genji's thought to be death. Hanzo would later abandon the clan because of his actions, making him a traitor. Genji, in critical condition, was found by Overwatch's Dr. Angela Ziegler, also known as Mercy, and in order to save his life, a majority of his body had to be replaced with cybernetics. After his recovery, Genji would join the Overwatch team, and with help from the team, would bring down his old Shimada clan. Up in space was Horizon Lunar Colony, a lab experimenting with genetically enhancing animals, including a gorilla named Winston. When the other gorillas rebelled and killed the scientists, Winston took an escape pod to Earth and joined Overwatch. However, he left behind a genetically enhanced hamster named Hammond, whose pod landed in the Australian outback. He would later join Junkertown and be known as Wrecking Ball. Lena Oxton, aka Tracer, was hired by Overwatch to test an experimental plane capable of manipulating time, but it malfunctioned and she was affected by coronal disassociation, causing her to slip in and out of present time. And with the new arrival of Winston, he was able to invent a device called the Kronos Accelerator, which helped Tracer stay anchored in the present time. But during this time, another group was rising to power and trying to seek world domination. This group, known as Talon, would begin to attack the Overwatch facilities, and in response, the Blackwatch team comprised of Moira, Reyes, Genji, and Cassidy would go out on a mission and end up assassinating Antonio, who was the current leader of the Talon group. However, this would go against laws and the rules of Overwatch, leading to the public finding out about Blackwatch, and the once seemingly perfect Overwatch team now looked sinister in the public eye. With Overwatch's trust diminishing, an individual who went by the name Doomfist would begin to ascend the ranks of the Talon organization, and as Overwatch was still recovering from their past events, they would take another massive hit when President Gerard Lacroix was found murdered by his wife who had been mind controlled by Talon, and giving Emile the name Widowmaker. 
During all this, another problem would occur in London. A group called Null Sector would come together, mainly consisting of Omnics who were mistreated by the government and humans. The Null Sector organization would attack during an event that was taking place in King's Row, taking government officials and spiritual leaders as hostage. Given that the United Kingdom government primarily stated that Overwatch doesn't come, a strike team was sent regardless, and although they were able to maintain order, this further deteriorated the trust that the group had with the public, and the United Nations decided to further investigate the group. During this, the Overwatch's headquarters would be destroyed in an, ex in a in an explosion, and Morrison and Reyes would be pronounced dead. It was thought that the explosion was caused by the conflict between the two, although there are no sources of this. The UN eventually created the Petra Act, leading to the dismantle of Overwatch and made all their actions illegal. A few years would pass and the Overwatch members would fight as vigilantes or had moved on to other things. Hanzo would return home to pay his respects to Genji, but unbeknownst to him, Genji also returned home. The two would meet and Genji would reveal himself, showing Hanzo he wasn't dead. Though also thought to have been dead, Reyes would be saved by scientist Moira Odirin who had been working for Talon. And although alive, he was considerably altered, as he could now switch between a solid and faded-like state. Jack Morrison, another that was thought to be dead, is found still alive fighting crime under his new name, Soldier 76. Talon would recruit an elite hacker named Sombra, and with the help of Reyes now being referred to as Reaper, would rescue Sigma de Cubo. Having previously been in an accident leaving him infused with the power of gravity, he was imprisoned. The Talon group gave him the opportunity to gain control over his powers and join their operation. Becoming increasingly worried about the state of the world, it was at this point Winston makes his recall message in hopes to bring Overwatch back together. After the recall, we're introduced to Mei, a scientist that had worked for Overwatch years ago. After waking up from cryosleep, she realizes that she was the only survivor of her group. Shortly after, she received Winston's recall message, giving her a reason to set out and join the group once again. Reinhardt would also receive the recall message, and after thinking about and reliving his memories, he too also decides to join the group again. Considering joining Overwatch or not, Cole Cassidy managed to intercept a piece of Overwatch's cargo from the Deadlock gang. This cargo would happen to be Echo, who was created by Mina Liao, one of the original members of Overwatch. Cassidy and Echo would meet up with Anna and Genji, where Cassidy and Anna would discuss the new leadership of Overwatch and decide that Cassidy would be the best fit. After this decision, Cassidy began traveling the world searching for new Overwatch recruits. The first person on his list is Anna's daughter, Farah, who he was able to convince to join Overwatch. As Cassidy headed north, he noticed he was being followed by Baptiste. Knowing this, Cassidy attacked him, leading to Baptiste explaining that he wants to help Overwatch. After hearing Baptiste's story, Cassidy recruits him to Overwatch. Next stop was Siberia. While trying to protect her family, Zarya meets up with Cassidy, who helps her save her family from the Omnic threats. After being impressed, Cassidy asks her to join Overwatch, and Zarya accepts, but this is when the two also find out that there is a Null Sector attack going on in Paris. This leads us into the Overwatch 2 cinematic. Winston, May, and Tracer respond to the call in hopes to help defend the city. Unfortunately, with their lack of numbers and a huge titan mech approaching, Winston prepares to sacrifice himself in order to save Mei, Tracer, and the rest of the civilians. But suddenly, out of nowhere, Genji jumps in and deflects the mech's bullets, Echo flies in from above, Mercy comes to help out Mei and Reinhardt, and Brig uses her shield to further protect the team. Using Mei's freeze grenade, they manage to take down the massive mech, and Overwatch has now officially returned. But after their victory in Paris, a large-scale Omnic attack led by Null Sector took place in South Korea. D.Va and the other mechas tried to defend the wave of Omnics but seemed like their hopes were running out. That was, until Cassidy and his new recruits flew in, giving them time to regroup and eventually eradicate the Null Sector threats. After this, D.Va is also invited into Overwatch, and the Overwatch team is given the instructions to all meet in Gibraltar. And that's the end of the Overwatch lore so far. There have been new character shorts released, but we decided not to add them as they don't add to the overall Overwatch story. If you want to help support the channel and earn cool rewards, you can do so on our Patreon, the link's in the description below. We're unable to be monetized on our YouTube currently, so any type of support keeps us motivated. As always, thank you for watching, like and subscribe if you haven't already. This has been Gamefiles, peace out or something.